God bless you, saints. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Good to be back home. Let's see if we can. There we go. All right, we've been studying on Hebrews chapter 6. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we're so grateful to be able to gather together around your word once more, and we come expecting this morning. We just ask, Lord, that you'll just bless the services today. And Lord, as we meditate upon your word, Lord, we begin to think upon things, Lord, to get our heart and our mind set, Lord, to receive your word today. Grant it, Lord, that you'll just bless us today in your name. Amen. <clears throat> so Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6, what kind of the theme of, of some of the things that... Um, Paul is, is talking about in, in that chapter. Just kind of wanted to summarize before we continue on. And he says in, in verse 7, For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs and meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth a blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. So the rain falls on the just and the unjust, but if, if it can fall on that good ground, it's going to bring up, up something. It's going gonna, it's gonna to quicken the word. And in verse 15, he says, And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Talking about Abraham, he obtained the promise. And verse 19, he says, Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. We've got that, that, that promise that Abraham was looking for typed something that uh, would happen in the New Testament, the promise of the Holy Ghost, of that seed, that promised seed. And that's what anchors our soul, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. So if we go, if we start reading through at verse 9, he says, But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So again, he's talking about promises that we have access to. And to not, not be slothful, but, but to be diligent, to, to, to uh, do everything we can <coughs> to further, to, to, to see this promise manifest in our life. And so as he, as he keeps reading on, he says in verse 13, for when God made promise to Abraham, he's talking about a promise here, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. So now let's think about that promise. The promise, promise that he gave to Abraham was to see a child born and to, to see a birth. And so the promise that we're looking at for this in this day is to is to see the birth of the word in our lives and to not just not just a new birth but uh, to be born again according to Malachi 4 5 6 to have the word born in us to bring us to a place where we can see the son of man manifest in our lives saying surely blessing I will bless thee and multiplying I will multiply thee and so after he had patiently endured after he had patiently endured now, remember, to keep in mind all of the things that Paul has talked about in Hebrews, the children of Israel coming through the wilderness and all the trials that they've endured and all the things, to, to see, they were, they were want, uh, striving to see that promise made manifest, to end up in the promised land. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. <coughs> so Paul say, Paul saying in verse 13, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. And we've got in verse, uh, the little way down there at the bottom, you, it, maybe you can't see it, uh, but in, in, in Genesis chapter 22, verse 16, it says, And said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. Now let's, let's think about that promise, that he gave a promise. By myself I have, I have, have I sworn, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast ob ob obeyed my voice. So now he's making a promise that's got something to do with that seed. And we know the seed is typing the seed. The seed is typing not just Abraham's progeny, but the seed is really typing, is, is speaking of, the, of Christ yes. that will come. Christ is the seed. So now when, when God makes a promise, 
it's something when we read the Bible, we can have we, it's something you can lay hold to. He's he's not just saying vain words. I I I, I I've been thinking, meditating a lot lately that how when you when when God's word goes forth, it is going to accomplish its purpose. It's not just going to fall fall to the ground, but it's going to do something. God's going to have a bride. So when God says something in His word, it's going to come to pass. And and Paul Paul that's what he's stressing here in in chapter six that the, that God's word is so immutable. It, immutable means it it cannot be changed. It's something that you can have confidence in. Like I've got this uh, the picture of this rock here, uh, a, a, a rock now. Uh, that no matter how much the, the winds and the waves crash against it, it's, it's going to stand the test of time. It's going to be there forever and ever. Like, like Brother Brown in that sermon we just listened to, the Hebrews 13.8, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's the kind of immutable rock that we have our confidence in. So in verse 16, Paul says, For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. He wanted to show the immutability of his counsel. In other words, how, how firm that uh, the things that he says are. How, he, he wanted us to have such a confidence in it. That not just that, not that only did he say it, but he swore an oath uh, to, to double confirm it. That by two immutable things, in which if it was if it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay upon the hope set before us. So again, I've got that scripture over there. By myself have I sworn that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. See, now he's talking about a promise to the seed, which is Christ. That he would multiply by the, uh, thy seed as the stars of the heaven. That's talking about you and I sitting here this morning. In other words, that's that, that promise that he gave, the immutable promise that he swore an oath on top of is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. As the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Now, see, see, that, this is something that will preach. When... <sighs> We've got a confidence, we've got a promise that's so firm that God wanted us to lay claim to, that no matter what kind of gates in front of you, no matter what kind of mountains in front of you, you've got a promise that you can lay claim to, that thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. So we've got two immutable things that we can, we can look, look to in, in the word. So Brother Ramos said, we have two things. Yes, first his word said he would do it. Now that should be enough, that when God said something, it, it, that, that should be enough. But the second was the sworn, his sworn oath on it, that he would do it. I swore an oath onto it. Now see, the two immutable things are that God cannot lie. God can't lie. We can, we can, we can say things just in our humanity, like I was saying in past Sunday school lessons, that you know, I'm going to be over at your house after church. I'm going to do. I'm going to meet you somewhere, and then a bad storm comes up, and we just, we just, so for some reason or another, we even if we're not lying, we're just we can't, we we might not be able to do it. But the God is not that way. It doesn't matter what storms come come up. It doesn't matter what mountains in front of you. It doesn't matter what the enemy throws in front of you. But His Word says that He would do it. Yes. And he put on top of that, the second was his sworn oath on it. So Brother Adam said, to know this, that God has promised us by a sworn oath, one that he cannot lie, the other, he swore an oath on top of that, what? That he will raise us. See how everything's bottled up in the Holy Ghost. Everything's, if you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got access to all of these promises that he's confirming by an oath on top of his word that he said he would do it. That he will raise us up at the last day and give us eternal life. That's that promise to the seed. The promise is the seed of Christ. <clears throat> so Brother Ram said, and he swore by himself, he said, God made an oath promised Abraham and swore by himself that I'll save you and your seed after you. What is the seed of Abraham now? See what the oath is that, 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 that he, he made to Abraham? What is the seed of Abraham now? Who is the one that's got this sure hold? Who is the one that's built on this foundation? Not just every Tom, Dick, and Harry, not all that saith to me, Lord, Lord, will enter in, but the one that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, 
And this is the Father's will. This is His word. So He's. I, I've got this little picture of the of the hand with all these all these 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 people that God was thinking about, because that's what the promise is. The promise is to you and I that have been born by the Holy Ghost, that that you'll possess the gate of every enemy. That no matter what the devil throws in you, that God has given you power to overcome. <clears throat> So, and I think I've got the in, in the yellow there that, that, that scripture that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And so, Brother Bram would say in Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and day, today and forever, he said, Father God, he was praying a prayer, it is most solemnly that we come to thee. You have declared yourself, you're not guilty of your promise anymore. How is he not guilty of his promise? Because he sent the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He sent the proof of, of, of the things that he was, he was promising to Abraham. He's, he's vindicated his word. He said, you made it true for the Bible said that. God cannot lie, the immutable things. God cannot lie. And God swore that he would do it if we could only believe it. And then we see Jesus said this morning in the reading that it's, it's impossible. The scriptures cannot be broken. So when God says something, it's something that you can hang everything on. You can hang your soul on. You can have total confidence that God, uh, it, the only thing that's preventing God's word from coming to pass is for us to just believe it. <clears throat> and Brother Ram in Hebrews chapter 6, number 2, he said, Notice God made a promise to Abraham unconditional. And now wait, Abraham did not have to do one thing. The only thing you got to do this morning is just believe God's word. You don't have to work one thing up. You don't have to grab somebody by the, head, by the head and shake them until they speak in tongues. You don't have to force something to happen. See, this morning while we're, we're preaching the gospel, we're, we're not trying to force anybody to do anything. We're not, you don't have to work anything up. Just sit there and just accept the word and believe it in your heart. He said, God said, I've already done it. So he's already done it. God made a promise to Abraham, to Adam, said, Adam, if you'll not touch this, you'll live forever. But the day you eat thereof, that day you die. Adam said, I just wonder what it's all about anyhow. He goes over and eats it tampering. Every time that God made a man, a man makes his covenant with God or God with a man, the man breaks his part. So God had to do something because he's seen what man was and they were foreordained. They were elected and God had to do something. So God came down and made his covenant with Abraham unconditionally. If it wouldn't have been unconditionally, Abraham would have been lost a long time. What's, it, what's Brother Ram talking about in Hebrews chapter 6? He's talking about an unconditional covenant. When God gives you the baptism of the Holy Ghost because you believed it, not because you worked something up, because you just believed it, then God's going to do it. He's going to take care of everything. If you just believe him, that's all you got to do. In Hebrews chapter 6, number 2, Brother Ram said, If we are dead in Christ, we are Abraham's seed. And our heirs according to the promise. That's what the Bible said. Would you like to read it? Well, the Bible said that the promise was not only to Abraham and his seeds. Like you, Abraham had many seeds, sure, many children. Ishmael was his child. He had seven or eight children after Sarah died by another one, Keturah. But look, the seed was the promised one, which was Isaac. And through Isaac came Christ. Through Christ came us. The promise is unconditionally. Now, what about Abraham? Why he'd have been done? It had been impossible for him to ever get back again. Sure, it had been impossible for Saul to ever get back again. If that, if you'd, you'd have to read the scriptures that way. See, but it wasn't. God's promise endures forever. Yes. Now, that's that immutable promise that God confirmed by an oath where he said it and he confirmed it by an oath that he swore it, that he was going to send his, he was going to send the promise of the Holy Ghost. And if you would receive it by believing, not trying to work something up, but God would accomplish, he would fulfill all of his promise by that Holy Ghost. Listen to what Brother Ram said. He said, God never gives Sarah the promise. He gave Abraham the promise, but Sarah was included. He made the promise in Christ Jesus, and I was included in him. You were too. Through Isaac come Christ. That was Abraham's seed as Christ. And then the seed of Abraham first wasn't through sexual seed. It was his faith that God reckoned. And it's through faith in us to believe the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ brings us Abraham's seed. For it was Abraham the promise was made. And only Abraham was the promise made to him and his seed. 
Abraham and to his seed, and his seed was not all of his children, but in Isaac was his seed called. And here is the results, here is the results of Abraham's seed. Jesus Christ is Abraham's seed, and we being dead in Christ take on Abraham's seed and are heirs according to the promise. Now, let's not forget the context that we're talking about. We're talking about Hebrews 6, chapter 8, verse 18, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation. So this morning, I think we should have a strong consolation that we got two immutable things that God gave us that we should have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. This hope that's set before us. We've got something. God has given unto us something. Brother Ram said in Melchizedek, the great prince and king, he said, what a marvelous promise. Two immutable things. God cannot lie and be God. Now, if God has made a promise in his Bible here, we believe the Bible to be the infallible word of God. And if God has made a promise in this Bible, we have this consolation and know that it's impossible for God to lie. Now, you think about this morning, whatever things you have need of as the words going forth, it's impossible for God to lie. Therefore, when he sees he promised it in the Bible, we believe it soul, body, and spirit. Can you say that this morning? You believe it soul, body, and spirit? It's impossible for him to lie. So let's see what that means now. Brother Ram said in Hebrews chapter 6, number 3, he said, knowing that. So if you've got the Holy Ghost now, if you've got that promised seed, knowing that after we have been called, that he said that he knew us before the foundation of the world and predestinated us unto adoption of children through Jesus Christ. And if he foreknew us, he called us. And when he called us, he justified us. What, what's Brother Ram trying to do? He's trying to build up your confidence to know if God's got you. If you're in him, he's got you. Amen. And when he called us, he justified us. We cannot justify ourselves. It's not by our own works. So he justified us by the death of his own son. Those who he has justified, he has already glorified. The word is already spoke. And we're just on our road going along rejoicing on our way to glory. Like in Romans chapter 8 verse 30, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. See, now, if he's filled you with the Holy Ghost and he's justified you in your soul, whom he justified, them he also glorified. He, in other words, he's got you. In, you're part of that promise. That, that goes back to Genesis 22. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. You're part of that promise. Now, see, you, you're part of that unconditional covenant that if you've got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he's got, he's got you. He said, now, Brother Brown would say in Hebrews chapter 6, number 2, he said, you say, well, can't we backslide? Absolutely. And when you backslide, you're going to get it. Don't you worry. Backsliding is when you, you, you forget what your purpose is. You forget, you forget you're supposed to be in church. You forget. You, you start sliding back, and you just get, you get to let the world start taking hold. He, he said, when you backslide, you're going to get it. Don't you worry. Abraham got it, and the rest of them got it, and you'll get it. Don't you think it gives you a right to sin? It doesn't. You'll pay for everything that you do. You'll reap what you sow. You do one little sin, and you'll reap a whole wash tub full. That's right. But, but, brother... That don't mean to say that you're lost. That's exactly right. Abraham reaped exactly what he sowed. That's right. But he was still saved. The covenant that now see that, that that's what we read just just a minute ago in Romans 830. Whom he predestinated, he called and who he called, he justified and who he justified. He's also glorified. The covenant that God made with Israel, they lost their inheritance. They lost the promised land and went down into Egypt. But they hadn't lost their covenant. God said, I remember my promise to Abraham. I remember and I've come down to deliver my people. Go down there, Moses, and tell Pharaoh. I said, let my people go. I remember I made a promise to Abraham and to his seed. Now, Brother Brown, when he's laying out all this promise, he, he would talk about how that, that uh, you remember when, they, when, when God put Abraham into a deep sleep, uh, he, 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 he made all those sacrifices where he, he killed the bulls and, and whatnot, all the animals, and he separated them. And Brother Brown would say, you know, when you, when you make a prom, when you made a covenant in the Old Testament, 
that's how how they would do. They would they would take an animal and they would divide it to to symbolize that covenant. And so that was fulfilled on the cross as Jesus his his he pulled his 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 soul and his body was divided as a covenant to us that he had fulfill, he was going to fulfill that promise. The promise what to give to send that seed. The the promise of the Holy Ghost. So Brother Bram and Melchizedek, the great prince and king, he said, and God swore to Abraham that he would keep this covenant with him and with his seed forever. God swore by himself that he would do it. And in doing so under the old law, when you made an oath under the old law, you killed an animal, cut it in two. And then the two men on which the oath was taken by stood between the animal and they wrote out on a piece of paper a certain contract. And that piece of paper was torn apart and given to one and the other man. And they took an oath over this dead animal that if they broke that covenant between them, let them be as this dead animal. Amen. So God having no other to swear by. See, this is tying in. Don't forget what we're talking about. We're talking about Hebrews chapter 6. Where in God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. And see, in the Old Testament, they would confirm an oath by tearing two, tearing two animals apart. But here in the New Testament, how do he confirm it? By dying on the cross. He said that having no other to swear by, he swore by himself and he took the oath over the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, foreseeing it in a shadow. And in the covenant, when he took Christ to Calvary, he tore his body and soul apart. And he lifted up his body to sit on his right hand and sick by, sent back the Holy Spirit to be in the Christian to do the same thing here in the church that he did in Christ. So he sent his Holy Spirit into the church to prove to prove his word, to prove his promise to you. That's why you, you, there's ev the evidence that God loves you is that he sent his Holy Spirit into you to prove his word. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay upon the hope set before us. So Brother Ram would say in Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, Father God, it is most solemnly that we come to thee. You have declared yourself. And I'm, I'm reading that same quote again. You're not guilty of your promise anymore. You made it true for the Bible said that God cannot lie. The immutable things, God cannot lie. And God swore that he would do it if we could only believe it. Amen. Which hope we have in verse 19. That's the hope we've got. The baptism of the Holy Ghost that God sent into his church. We hope, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. That's your anchor. And w when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, there ain't nothing going to ever take that away from you. Both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. That's the anchor, the anchor that anchors your whole life. It'll anchor your family. It anchors your decisions. It changes, it changes everything when you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So now Paul's, Paul's, he's making his way over to Hebrews chapter seven, where he's going to start laying out what who Melchizedek was and and what why that's important to us. I'm gonna skip over that slide. And Brother Bram said talking about a forerunner he said no wonder you can look death in the face and say where is your sting grave where is your victory because we're in the forerunner a forerunner did you ever notice in the old western days many times we went across the old trails a forerunner or scout when the wagon train was perishing for water the scout run ahead and he seen the tribes of indians he bypassed them and he seen where there was a fountain of water he rushed back to tell the boss of the wagon train Step up the horses. Everybody take good courage. For just over the mountain, there's a big fountain of water. He's a forerunner. And here, the forerunner, man was once pinned down by the devil under rapid fire, but somebody took the machine gun nest. That was Jesus. The forerunner has gone before us. And Satan's standing there with a machine gun, pinning us down, always in bondage and scared of death. He was guarding that fountain. Sure he was. He was given the commission because we had sinned and been driven, drove away from it, but the forerunner, Christ, come in and took the nest. Now see, the, the forerunner, forerunner is somebody to go ahead of you and, and clear the way and let you know what's ahead. Now you think, let's meditate on this for a second now. The forerunner is somebody that goes through all of the things for you so you can look back, in this case, you can look back at the life of Jesus Christ and look and see everything that you're gonna have to go through as a Christian. 
Let's examine that for a second. Now look, he was born in a major. He was born down in a, in, in, in a in like a little dirty, a dirty spot, you know, just next to the cows and next to the donkeys and things. Just like how the word was born in your dirty, filthy life. And, and God, God came and, 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 and birthed the word in that little manger. Now, you keep following through all, all, the, all the significant points of Jesus' life as the forerunner. He lived a life that you're also going to have to live. He went down and he was baptized by John. Well, you got to be baptized. you got to be baptized. Repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then there on that river Jordan, he, he, he fulfilled, a, a, you know, in a type of, of, of you've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And he kept, he kept walking through his life, and he came to the place where finally he was, he was adopted. And on that Mount Transfiguration, uh, he went through the process of hear ye him, where God looked down at him and said, now, now this, this person has come to a place where I trust everything that he says. Now, you see all these things as a forerunner. He's going through, going through the process, the same process that you and I have to go through. He, there, there in that garden of Gethsemane, dying out to himself, Father, not my will, but thine be done, that you and I have to come to that place as well where we're totally trusting and, and, and totally die, die out to ourself. And he went down into the grave, just like a lot of, a lot of Christians have to go, will have to go on, down into the grave. But then he rose up on Easter morning, and his body was changed. And you see, he went through, uh, as a forerunner, he went through every process, every step in his life that a Christian is going to go through. The forerunner, and we're going to close on this as a musician, go ahead and come forward. The forerunner, the man that went before us as one come and took our place, none other but God himself. He come down and made himself a man for a front forerunner to prove to the people why. He swore by an oath that he was going to do it. He swore he was going to save us. He swore that we could do it. He swore these things to us by himself. Then he come down and was made a forerunner. He made himself a forerunner. He entered here on the world and lived in the world, sin all around him and above, and above sin because he trusted God. Amen. God bless you.